Kia ora koutou and welcome to Hadrian's Wall in about three minutes. Review copy used. It has a solo mode. It's a game for one to six players, playing time is medium, and it's a pretty complex game. It's 122 AD and Emperor Hadrian has finally had enough of the picks. He draws a line on the map and says, everything south of here is Rome. You're one of the generals in charge of building Hadrian's Wall, the northern barrier of the Roman Empire. Can you hold back the picks and claim the most glory and renown? The winner is the player with the highest score after six turns, and in the solo game, you're trying to get the highest score possible. Roll and write. No dice here, but you will take actions and mark them off tracks on a score sheet. Victory points. Points come from many sources, including personal goals. Player turn. The solo game has very few rules differences from the multiplayer game. First grab one of each sheet, then take one set of cards and you will play two each turn. Turn over one fake card. This will show what eight resources are available to each player. Deal two of your player cards. Choose one to keep for its resources and take them and place the other one along your timeline. This is a bonus you can score at the end of the game. You also gain any resources or workers from areas marked on your sheet here. Black represents soldiers, teal builders, purple servants, yellow citizens and grey raw resources. Actions require you to spend workers or resources and then mark the space used on your sheet. Here we use a builder to mark one space on the fort and a resource to mark one space on the wall. Because the wall space covers up a yellow meeple we take a citizen to our supply. We play two servants to advance this track two steps, covering up the hammer and resource icon. We claim the resource and also increase our resource production. At game start, you can only build in this box. To open up this area, you need to build the medium granary. You also can't build your wall or sippy tracks past the fort track. This icon builds your cohorts, which are important for defending the wall. The other sheet has the five different citizens and their buildings. In general, they work the same way as each other. Place a citizen to advance the track and claim rewards. Once you have reached a certain level in a track, you can build the associated building, like the precinct here. Each set of buildings does different things. The market lets you collect trade goods for reputation, the theatres give you a variety of rewards, the temples grant piety and favours, the courthouse lets you recruit workers, and the scouts let you play Tetris for bonuses. In a multiplayer game, you can use any player's card for this. In solo, there will be two dummy cards for scouting and trade goods. Once all players are done, draw a number of fake cards as shown here based on your chosen difficulty. These match against each cohort. If the sum is less than your marks in that cohort, you hold back the picks and gain valor. For each one that gets through, you gain disdain. Disdain can be removed by bribes at the baths, or negated by diplomats or offerings at the temple. And disdain costs points at the end of the game. Why would you like this game? If you have enjoyed roll and rights in the past and ever thought, I wish there was much more to this, then this is the game for you. Hadrian's Wall is a beast of a roll and write. With so many different paths and options to choose from, you will initially be overwhelmed. And then it will click and you will see how all the interconnecting parts of this game work. The goal selection system forces you to change how you play each game as well, as different paths will be worth different points. And the game comes with 200 of each sheet in the box, which is heaps. The best thing about this game is its depth. This is one game you won't be solving after two plays. However, like most Roll and Write style games, this is a solo game that can be played in a group. If you do end up playing it multiplayer, there will be very limited player interaction. And there is a lot happening on the two sheets, so learning what all the different tracks do is a lot to take in. Don't expect to get it all on your first play. Hadrian's will share some common traits with Fleet the Dice Game. And for another heavy game with similar concepts, try Paladins of the West Kingdom. Hadrian's Wall, a wall of options. If you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, subscribe to the channel, and come support us on Patreon.